Good evening. Welcome to the State of Business on Art Television with me, Tiranta Gunwardana. Let's take a look at today's headlines first. Sri Lanka's headline inflation increases to 3.6% in April 2019. And internet and social media have significant impact on correct decision making, says Minister Ajit P. Pereira. Now news in detail. The report regarding inflation for April 2019 released by the Statistics Department of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka states that Sri Lanka's headline inflation, as measured by the year-on-year -year change in the National Consumer Price Index, increased to 3.6% in April 2019 from 2.9% in March 2019, mainly as a result of the monthly increases of prices in both food and non-food categories. Meanwhile, in April 2019, year-on-year -year food inflation was negative 1.2%, while non-food inflation continued its increasing trend for the fourth consecutive month, recording a 7.5% increase in the current month. The change in the NCPI measured on annual average basis increased up to 1.9% in April 2019 from 1.7% in March 2019. When monthly change is considered, the NCPI increased by 0.7% in April 2019, with the increases observed in the prices of items in both food and non-food categories. Within the food category, prices of vegetables, milk powder, potatoes, fresh fish, limes and big onions recorded notable increases. Consequently, within the non-food category, prices of the items in alcoholic beverages and tobacco, transport, miscellaneous goods and services, health and clothing and footwear subcategories increased during the month. The core inflation which reflects the underlying inflation in the economy increased to 6.3% in April 2019 compared to 5.8% in March 2019 on a year-on-year -year basis due to the increases in the prices of items in the food category, mainly in milk powder, and the non-food category particularly in the alcoholic beverages and tobacco and miscellaneous goods and services subcategories. The annual average NCPI core inflation also increased to 3.7% in April 2019 from 3.3% in March 2019. Non-Cabinet Minister of Digital Infrastructure and Information Technology, Ajit P. Pereira, attending the After Access Survey as Chief Guest, added that the government is working on an all-in-one emergency app for Sri Lanka with the help of the ICTA. As a minister, we identified one important aspect, that's emergency services. Actually, the survey shows that being uh, able to act in an emergency is one of the most useful things people do with their phones. I'm happy to tell you that we are now working on an all-in-one emergency app with support from ICTA, uh, which will be launched soon. So, one app for all emergency services. Speaking further, Minister Perera also pointed out that the internet and social media have a significant impact on decision making. In a democratic society, what we need is clear information and correct information to take decisions. I think the internet will play a very important role. The social media will play a very important role. Addressing the after access survey launched in Sri Lanka by the regional digital policy think tank Learn Asia, senior research manager Aisha Zainuddin emphasized that the high awareness of e-commerce and platforms in Sri Lanka did not, however, translate to high use, and she expressed the following about the barriers to smartphone ownership in Sri Lanka. So what the barriers um, are to smartphone ownership, you know, the people who, the mobile phone owners who don't have a, a smartphone at the moment, um, we had 60% of them again saying, I don't need a smartphone. A basic phone or whatever I have is, it's quite enough for me. Then we have a, another small uh, a segment, tw well not small, significant, 23% saying that they can't afford one. It's too expensive. So clearly there is some demand there, but they can't get over the next hurdle. So obviously the first hurdle or uh, the first stage is actually wanting or you know needing a smartphone. Once you get into that group, then the neck you start looking at the next set of factors like affordability um, and so on. Aisha Zainuddin also explained why awareness of mobile internet usage is low in Sri Lanka. So internet use and barriers, as I said, you know that's where we want people to get to to get to um, you know the internet to benefit you know to get the economic kind of benefits and efficiencies and so on that are associated with, with it. Uh, so first we ask about awareness. Do you know what the internet is? And you have 62% of the population saying, yes, we know uh, what the internet is, but the balance, 38%, say, well, we don't know what the internet is. So a bit of a problem there. And secondly, the, the, so the next problem also is that even those who are aware, so the 62% are aware, there's a whole bunch of them that are not yet using. So there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of people there 
marked with the, with the blue box that have not really converted as such. They, they know what the internet is, but they're still not using it. So 37% of, of the 15 to 65 population are using the internet at the moment in Sri Lanka, which is, I mean, when you look at the, the, the comparison with the rest of the countries, uh, it's really not that great. Now, you know, we're not really playing at, at the level of our economic peers, but we're really playing at the level of the regional peers. Speaking further, she added that increasing smartphone usage will enhance internet usage. Smartphone use is really what's driving internet use in Sri Lanka. Um, I mean, it's the same across most countries, but here you can see it's quite a stark difference. If you look at uh, so the basic phone and feature phone owners, just 10 and 15% of them are using the internet, not necessarily on their phone, but on other devices as well, whereas 80% of uh, smartphone owners are using the internet. So clearly, getting people onto a smartphone is, is what is needed. It's time for us to go in for a short commercial break. Do stay tuned for more news after this. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at several cabinet decisions that were approved on Tuesday. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by Minister of City Planning, Water Supply and Higher Education, Ralph Hakim, to implement the second phase of medical faculty construction project in the University of Sabaragamo during the 2020-2021 period using a loan facility provided by the Saudi Development Fund. The proposal presented by the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, Partly Champika to build 2,272 houses in the Maligawat Railway Department land, Appalwatta, in Kettaramia, Kimula Alley in Blue Mendel, and the Irrigation Department land in Ratmalana under the loan scheme of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank was also approved by the Cabinet of Ministers. The Cabinet of Ministers also approved the proposal presented by Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe to purchase electricity at a price of 26 rupees 20 cents per unit from the 200 megawatt power plant to be established in Kerala Pitiya for six months from June 2019 and from the 200 megawatt power plant in Gaul for nine months starting September 2019. Sri Lankan seafood exporters participated at the 27th edition of Seafood Expo Global Seafood Processing Global at the Brussels Expo, the world's largest trade fair in the fisheries sector. The exhibition was held from 7th to 9th May 2019 in Brussels, Belgium. The Sri Lankan Pavilion was organized by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board in collaboration with the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Belgium, comprising six leading seafood exporters in Sri Lanka, including Wiz, Jai Seafood Processing Private Limited, Global Seafood Private Limited, Tropic Fishery Private Limited, Lini Seafood Private Limited, Ceylon Fresh Seafood Private Limited, and Annai Seafood Private Limited. The SCG in Brussels is the most important annual event for seafood buyers, and the visitors are industry owners, executive purchasing managers, category managers, private label program buyers, and equipment and packaging buyers from restaurants, supermarkets, hotels, catering services, importers, distributors in the seafood trade. The Honorary Consul of Sri Lanka in Luxembourg, Dirk van der Ploeg, Honorary Consul of Sri Lanka in Belgium, Monique de Decker, and several other distinguished invitees graced the occasion. Participants of Sri Lankan companies were able to find new buyers and secure nearly US$345,000 worth of confirmed orders from countries such as France, Italy, Spain, Japan, Russia, Portugal, USA, Belgium, Poland, Australia, Ukraine, Germany, while some more orders are under negotiation. In more developments, the Columbus Stock Exchange and the Securities Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka recently organized an Invest Sri Lanka forum targeting portfolio and direct investors in Singapore. The event was organized in association with the Sri Lankan High Commission in Singapore and supported by the Singapore Business Federation in the capacity of promotional partner. State Minister of Finance, Iran Vikramaratna, the Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Indrajit Kumara Swami, SCC Chairman, Ranil T. Vijaysingha, CSC Chairman, Ray Abhayavardhana, and the Managing Director at Linear Wealth Management, Dr. Naveen Gunawardhana, spoke at the event, while CSC CEO, Rajiva Bandar Nayaka and SCC Director General, Vajira Vijay Gunawardhana, joined in as panelists during the discussion segment. The panel discussion was moderated by Senior Advisory Board Member member and past president of the Singapore Sri Lanka Business Association, Manjeev Dodanvela. The CSE and the SCC have previously conducted forums in the UK, USA, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, UAE, India, Switzerland and Hong Kong, and this was the fourth Invest Sri Lanka forum conducted in Singapore. The forum drew an encouraging response from investors who offered an assessment of the investment climate and expectations for the short, medium term, considering the context of the Easter Sunday attacks that took place on 21st April 2019. 
The Med Department states that the showery conditions are expected to enhance to some extent over most parts of the island, particularly in the southwestern part, and that showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, Sabaragamo, central and southern provinces. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places in the western Sabaragamu, central and northwestern provinces and in the Gaul and Matra districts. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere after 2 pm. Fairly heavy falls of about 100 mm can be expected at some places in the western Sabaragamu, central, southern and Uwa provinces. There may be temporary localized strong winds during thunder showers and the general public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by lightning. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the sea area extending from Puttalam to Potuvil via Colombo and Gaul. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere as well. Winds will be southwesterly and speeds will be 20 to 40 km in the sea areas around the island. Winds will be southwesterly and speeds will be 20 to 40 km per hour in the sea areas around the island. Wind speeds can increase up to 50 km an hour at times in the sea area extending from Puttalam to Kankasanthure via Mena and the sea area extending from Mathura to Batikulo via Potuvil. It's time for us to take another small break. Do stay tuned for Stock Watch after this. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 4.40 points to close at 5,295.68 and the S&P SL20 gained 6.95 points to close at 2,473.10. Turnover was 127.4 million rupees and 8.4 million shares were traded. Now let's take a look at today's Forex trades. And that's all the news for today on State of Business. Do join us tomorrow at the same time for more of the very latest. Until then, take care. Good night.